Hi, this is Rich Baum from Sacramento, California, and uh, I am uh, welcoming you to our second video. We want to thank everybody who participated in our survey and watched our first video. And this is our follow-up to give you a little more teaser about our new course. And uh, I'm a uh, longtime photographer and an educator on YouTube, and uh, I'm here with my podcasting partner, Brian Berkowitz in New York. And uh, Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself and what are we doing here today? Sure. So um, as you just mentioned, I am your podcast co-host. Um, we've been doing shooting spaces since early 2018. So we're going on four years now. And I'm a commercial real estate photographer. I also shoot you know, commercial photography, architectural and retail spaces, but mainly I'm a commercial real estate photographer. So I shoot um, in New York City. I'm based out of New York, um, office spaces, tons and tons of office spaces. I think I mentioned to you this previously in 2020, um, and I'm saying this 2020 because I don't have my final numbers for 2021 yet, I shot or I photographed 1.2 million square feet of office space in New York City. So, um, I mean, it is a lot, but it, it, when you talk about commercial space, it does, it's not as bad as it sounds when you compare it to residential, but you know, 1.2 million is a lot of space. Um, so um, I've been doing strictly commercial real estate from a real estate perspective over the last uh, two to three years. So it's, it's been fun. But um, you asked what we're going to do today. I think for, for our second part in this little uh, mini series that we decided to put out, I think why don't we offer um, people watching or listening a little quick two or three minute tip or trick to quote um, your little uh, catchphrase, tip or trick. Um, for, for you, for residential, and you know, I, can, I can say something from the commercial side that people can learn and, and benefit from. So um, what do you got? What do you got for us, Rich? Give us the quick oh, two boy. or three minute um, tip or trick that everyone can take away from, from a residential real estate perspective. You put me on the spot, Brian. Okay. Um, you know, if I was going to say one thing that I want people to take away from my course is something that people don't really uh, don't think about as much. Uh, a lot of us think about what camera are we going to get, what composition we're going to use, what we're going to do. And I know on my YouTube channel, uh, people will see that I don't do a lot of business on my YouTube channel because business is a really difficult thing to teach or to give suggestions to people because everyone's situation, wherever you live, the uh, demographics, the the, everything like that. It, it is different for everybody. But I was able to come together with some universal um, tips and tricks and just suggestions, things that are super important. Years ago, I watched a video and I learned so much about the why, how, and what are we shooting? Why are we shooting and how we're doing it? And what is what the heck are we doing out there, Brian? So I want to say, um, if there's one thing I want people to take away from my videos and something I can teach. Sure, I can teach you settings and where to put your light and this and that, but I got to teach you how to work with your client, which is generally a real estate agent. And it's the same thing in your business. You may have a commercial real estate agent, but that specifically does commercial spaces, but it's very similar. And I think that's something, if anything that we can cross over between your commercial real estate photography uh, course and my residential real estate photography is going to be client expectations. How to deal with your client, how to, um, how to have your communication uh, work where they may not realize that you're trying to really get them to do what is going to make your life better and easier. So you make it sound like it's their idea. And now this is exactly the same in any business. I think client expectations or clarification of expectations is super important. And, yeah. I, was wait, know, I was waiting for those words. Uh, you got to trademark those. Clarification of expectations. Yeah, that is, is super key. And I can't stress upon that enough. And, you know, something I spend a lot of time on this whole course is throughout it, I'm constantly giving tips and tricks on how you can say a little catchphrase, how you can give your client the confidence to know that you are the expert and they should listen to you. I mean, how many times have you had an agent follow you around 
And, uh, you know, that lasts about a day. <laughs> and, uh, and then I want to have a little conversation with my client. But I think if I was going to say any one thing, you know, on my course, I go through everything from start to finish that you're going to need to know and everything from start to finish that will help you bring your game up. If you're an existing photographer with an existing real estate photography business, you're going to get some value out of that. And you're going to get some experience that will lead to all areas of photography. If you do weddings, if you do sports, but also if you do commercial real estate. So, you know, we, we kind of cross over in ways, though they are two completely different courses. So yeah, a lot of value there and a yeah, lot of hours. Cool. I don't think we mentioned my video is, is my course is like six plus hours. I have dozens of chapters, dozens of videos all in one spot. How are your, your courses is, is, is long also, but it's not long in a bad way. It's no, different. not as long as yours, but I think it's a little under four hours, but yeah, it's, it's different type of content. Cool. But yeah, that's a, that's a great tip. And, you know, we say that all the time on the podcast, make sure your you know what your client wants and your client knows what they're getting. Um, so no surprises. Exactly. We hate, we hate surprises. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So I wanted to talk quickly for, for a minute or two about pricing. Um, something a little more maybe intriguing because everyone always talks about what do I charge? And we always say we're never going to tell people what to charge. And I do tell people in my course what I charge, but um, I can never tell somebody else, this is what you should be charging because there are so many factors and variables that play into that. Um, you know, your skill level, the type of clientele you're dealing with, the type of spaces you're dealing with, where you're located. Um, and I'm located in New York and, you know, pricing for commercial spaces are typically more expensive than anywhere else. So, or, or, you know, compared to other smaller cities. So, um, it's hard for me to say what people should be charging, but you know, I will say as I guess a tip, when you're shooting commercial real estate, you should generally be in the three to four times that of your residential pricing range. So hypothetically, if you're charging 150 bucks per shoot, from a residential standpoint, you should be roughly around the $600 range. And I know people get nervous and people get scared when they give that type of price to a client and they say, my client is never going to go for that. Um, but let me give you some real world numbers to explain why your photographs in a commercial setting have so much more value um, than you think and then residential. And I use the sim similar numbers in my course. Um, and I'm going to take, for example, 2020, which was last year, and the average price of commercial real estate in New York rented for $85 per square foot. So let me let me take out my calculator just so I can do some math here. I can't even I can't even comprehend that. That happens <laughs> a unique experience. So yeah, true. Don't expect to go out in in. Uh... P Poughkeepsie, wherever Poughkeepsie is. Exactly. Well, yeah, um, the, these numbers might seem extreme for people that are not in Manhattan, but but the concept is is the same all around wherever you go. True. So True. so um, it's all just relative. So let's say you have 80, 80, uh, 85 dollars per square foot on a ten thousand square foot space, which is not that which is not that not that big in a commercial you know in a True. commercial standpoint um, you know for an office space that has you know, 50, 100 employees, 10,000 square feet is, is not such a big space. So when you have 10,000 square foot space at $85 a square foot, they're paying $850,000 to lease this space. Now, when you think about that, no, no office space is going to lease for a year, right? They're going to lease for a minimum of five years, but it's typically 10 years that the landlord's going to want to lease. But let's say five years, for an example, if you're leasing 10,000 square foot space at $85 a square foot for five years, that's $4.2 million that this tenant is going to be paying towards this landlord over the course of the lease. Now, let's say you have an agent who's making 5%. You know, some agents might make more, some might make less, but we'll take the average of 5% of $4.2 million as a 5% commission. Your agent on leasing this property is making $212,000. So can they afford to, you know, pay you three to four times more than residential? Yes. Is your value at least three to four times that on your photos than residential, because 
you know, unless you're a residential real estate agent that's selling four or $5 million and up properties, you're not making those type of commissions. So the commercial agents, and obviously, like I said, this is New York, for example, those numbers are probably higher in New York, uh, I would assume are higher in New York than elsewhere. But my point is the same. Your agents are making significantly more money, which means your photos have significantly more value to them, which means you are well within your right and don't be afraid to charge at least three to four times that of residential real estate. Hope that was helpful. Very true. People. Very true. And I will say something that in, in uh, the way you shoot uh, your commercial real estate uh, compared to, let's say, design photography or 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 something that would be high end uh, new building photography, things like that. I think it is something that is very accessible to someone newer to the business. It is um, probably not nearly as, as long to edit. Am I correct there? Just the commercial photography? Commercial uh, yeah, I, th I, think, I think it's a little easier. Yeah, yeah. For sure. And it is something that, you know, you got to look at. Yes, you're going to be making you know, multiples of your money, but it, it does take, take a little more detail, a little more work, but that just comes with the territory. But uh, yeah, man, I think that no matter where you are, you can take advantage of these these uh, business models that you're you're putting out there, this education you're putting out there, Brian, and utilize it in anywhere that you live. And uh, this is the same way with my course. Anywhere that you are, you may have little things that are different, but these are universal um, uh, lessons that we're teaching. And uh, you'll walk away. And the best part too is, you can walk away tomorrow after watching one day of the video in one hour. And you can take something away for it, from it, and you can do it right away. You can implement mm -hmm. those strategies, those techniques, and the educational material right away the next day. All right, cool. Well, um, for the sake of not going on, because everyone knows we can just keep on talking, um, let's, uh, let's, I guess, call it quits. We want to thank everyone for watching our second video in our little series we decided to put out. And um, hopefully these little tips and tricks that we each offered will help you going forward um, in your residential and commercial real estate businesses. And uh, that's it. Um, we're going to put out another one in the next couple of days. So definitely look out for that. And um, I think that's that about wraps it up. If you have any questions, please shoot them over. If you have any feedback or comments on these videos, please put them in, you know, Rich and I will try and be as active as possible to reply to you if you have any comments and um, messages for us or suggestions. So with that, I guess, Rich, as always, it's a pleasure. As, as always, Brian, it's, it's a pleasure and an honor to uh, spend time with you, even though we're in different parts of the country. It's great. We're and in different countries. Different countries, different parts of countries, whatever. Uh, but I want to say thank you to everybody out there uh, for your, you know, your faith in us to help you be more successful because that's what it all boils down to. If you're watching this, you've obviously gotten something from us, and and trust us, these courses are. I've been waiting eight years to do a course, and I literally have been waiting the last three to release one because of the timing. And this is it now. There's no better time than right away to get better and start making more money and have more fun in your career. Leave that day job. Come on over to us. And if we can do it, you can do it.